Welcome back to our lecture series, Linear Algebra Done Openly. As usual, I'm your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. This video is the first video for section 2.1 about vector equations, which is the first section for chapter two, the algebra and geometry of vectors. We have seen before that vectors are simply quantities which we can add and scale by the usual rules of associativity, commutivity, and the distributive laws. We've seen a lot of examples of diverse kinds of vectors, you know, such as arrows, right? How do you add two arrows together? Well, in physics, there's sense to that meaning, right? Uh, we've seen linear equations can be viewed as vectors. Polynomials could be viewed as vectors, just to name a few examples. Of particular importance is the vector space Fn, right? This Fn we keep on seeing over and over again, like say Rn, uh, Cn, you know, C2, just as some examples here. What's so special about this Fn? Well, F is just some field and N is a natural number, but recall this space, this Fn, I'll put it back on the screen there. This Fn is the set of column vectors, or you know, row vectors if you prefer, but it's the set of column vectors whose entries come from the field F and there are N numbers in the array. We've seen examples of linear combinations of column vectors, linear transformations involving column vectors. In fact, every solution to a linear system that we have seen in this series thus far is in fact a column vector, although again, sometimes it's written as a row. So, although there are all of these different types of vectors, there's, there's, a, there's variety and diversity to what we could consider a vector, why do we place so much focus primarily on column vectors? Well, the short answer to this question is that column vectors of Fn are the most important type of vector. In this chapter, we're going to explore the topics of coordinates, which will ultimately prove that every finite dimensional vector space is isomorphic to Fn. Whoa, uh, that, there might have been a lot of words I just used right there that you're not exactly familiar with yet. That's really okay. Uh, we'll be introduced to those topics more in this chapter. Basically, what I want you to take away from this discussion so far is that every vector space is essentially just Fn. Maybe it's just in a disguise for Halloween or whatever. So we're going to start learning more about vectors and see that they all essentially are just like Fn, but that, that's near the end of this chapter. In the current section, 2.1, uh, I want to talk some more about linear combinations, right? We've seen the linear combinations are really, they're really the bread and butter of vectors, right? We add them, to, we add vectors together, we scale them. And so if you want to combine a bunch of vectors together to make a new vector, it's a linear combination. I just gave you a bunch of vectors, uh, a1, a2, a3, up to an, and I gave you a bunch of scalars, x1, x2, x3, up to xn. You could combine those together by rules of the vector space and that would then combine to be some vector call it b and we could then compute what b is in that situation the other direction what if we are given the vectors a1 a2 up to an they're just the same and instead of being given the scalars what if we're giving the vector b that they combined into that is what if we're given the following equation like so where the vectors a1, a2, up to an, they're given to us, they're fixed, and then the vector b is also given to us and fixed, but the scalars x1, x2, these are variables. We don't know what they are. Could we figure out what the scalars are that combine the vectors a to give us the vector b? That's the question we have at hand, and so this is what we mean by the vector equation. Uh, how does one solve this vector equation? Now, to make life a little bit easier for us, each of these AIs, uh, so like have A1, A2, A3, we'll, we'll actually, we'll call it AJ right here. Uh, J will just be sort of like this uh, variable to keep track of where, where are we in the list, you know, A1, A2, AJ generically. So let's just say that each vector AJ can be expressed in the following way. We'll call the first entry of AJ A1J, the second entry A2J, the next entry will be A3J, all up to AMJ. So our vectors a, j, we're gonna say that these a, j vectors belong to the vector space f, m. m is the number of components there. Now the reason that's because I don't claim that the number, of, the number of entries in the vectors is the same as the number of vectors we have. Those could potentially, those could potentially be different, right? So a, j has m many elements in it. 
And likewise, the vector B will be a vector in FM, and we'll call its entries just BJ, uh, generically speaking. So with that, with that sort of like uh, notation, I'm interested to express the entries of these vectors. Uh, we see the following type of situation. Vector equation x1 times a1 plus x2 times a2 all the way up to xn times an is equal to b. Remember the, note, the, the convention we use here. We're going to write vectors in bold font, and then scalars won't have any bold fonts, so it's easier to tell them apart here. Okay, so if we were to expand what a1, a2, a n are just by writing the, the numbers inside of them, remember a1 would look like a11, a21, a31 all the way down to a m1. A2 would look like a12, a22, a2, a32 all the way up to a m2. And then if we go to the end of the list, this will look like a1n, a2n, a3n all the way up to a m n. And then if we expand the B, we get a B1, B2, BM. This is just writing the vectors as the column vectors they are. But now, now when you look at this right here, we have scalar multiplication. We have a column vector times a scalar. And the idea is you distribute this scalar onto each entry in the vector, uh, giving us what we see right here, this A11X1, A21X1, a 31x1 all the way up to a m1x1 and if we do this for every single vector along the way uh, we'll get each of these i guess we don't distribute anything on b we didn't scale b by anything so then so then we get each of these vectors and we do the scalar multiplication but now we have these end vectors that we could add together right and so what, is, what does it mean to add together column vectors well you add together the first components you just add those together you get this thing right here and then for the next one right here, you add all the second components together, uh, which gives you this entry right here. And then for the third components and the, the fourth components, all the way down to the nth component, you just add these all together and you get a combination like this. Now, when you have two vectors that are equal to each other, the only way that two vectors are equal to each other is if component-wise, they agree, right? The first components agree the second components agree, the third components agree, the nth components agree. That's what vector equality means. So if we equate the first two entries together, we get the following linear equation. We see that a11x plus a12x2 plus uh, a13x3 plus a14x4 all the way down to a1nxn is going to equal b1. And we do that for the second entry, which gives us the second equation. We do that for the third entry, the fourth entry, the fifth entry, all the way down to the nth entry. And so now you can see why we chose the, the numbering system that we did. Each of the entries in the vectors corresponds to the entry in a system of equations, which will then translate to an augmented matrix, right? For which, that's how we usually denote the entries of a matrix, is the 1-1 one, one position, the 1-2 position, the 1-3 position, the 1-in position, the 1-2, sorry, the 2-1 the position, the 2-2 two, two position, the 2-3, the M1, the M2, the M3, the MN. So you can see we, we, we kind of knew what was going to happen here. Solving that vector equation corresponds to the following linear system of equations. Solving the vector equation requires us we solve the linear system, write the linear system as an augmented matrix, and then we row reduce it to echelon form using Gaussian or Grin Gauss, Gauss elimination. And so summarizing what we see right here is the following. The solution, solution to the, any, so, so we have this solution vector right here. Uh, the solution to the vector equation is likewise the solution to linear system, which comes from the corresponding uh, system of uh, the, the corresponding matrix equation there. This should be an Fn, M, Fm there. But despite the, the, the slight typo, the solving the vector equation is equivalent to solving a system of equations for which augmented matrices is a very powerful tool. In the next video, we'll do some examples of solving vector equations by recognizing the corresponding linear system and then solving said linear system.